landscapes. They are a pretty big deal because they are literally the groundwork from which everything is built on top of. So if you have a bad looking landscape, you'll probably have a bad looking scene. So this is part one in a new tutorial series that will go over all the secrets to creating photorealistic, natural looking landscapes, just like the ones you're seeing right now. Now, we've all been there. We want to create a nice looking landscape. So we go online, we watch a couple of tutorials, and this can be the result. Yeah, this is pretty bad, but this is how most first landscapes go like. If we look down on the ground, we can see that this texture is noticeably tiling over and over again. Also, the placement of the materials are all wrong. We wouldn't see grass at an 80 degree angle like this. And not to mention this entire formation of the landscape kind of looks like Play-Doh and the gloss is all off. Grass and dirt wouldn't really be this shiny. Well, in this series, we will fix all those issues with landscape, starting with that gross texture repetition. So in this video, I will go over four tips to hide any texture repetition. So your materials will stop looking like this and start looking like this. Tip number one, and this tip might be a little bit stupid, but I have to say it, use a good texture. Okay, a bad texture is a bad texture no matter how hard you try. You wanna look for textures that are seamless, so they tile without any noticeable edges and textures without any identifiable landmarks. For example, if you have a grass texture with a rock slapped right in the middle, that texture will be repetitive no matter how hard you try. So you're probably wondering right now, where can I get high quality, nice textures? Well, that's where Megascans comes in. Megascans is a complete library of surfaces that have been scanned from real life specifically for use within Unreal Engine by Epic Games themselves. And all of these textures are completely free. So go through, find some great textures and just use those. I think for the rest of this tutorial, I'll be using Grass Uncut and Grass Dried. Also, I already have a landscape set up here. You can download the landscape right now, link in the description below. Also, I made a landscape material in an instance as we go into it. This is just a very, very simple landscape material. I have grass right here and dried grass down here, but I'm just gonna call it dirt right now to make the parameter naming easier and a layer blend, which we then break material attributes. That's why I can edit these material attributes after the blend. And finally, just going into the material. If you have no idea what's going on in here or how I even got these textures into Unreal in the first place, I would suggest you go check out the Unreal Engine beginner tutorial right now, where I will go through the process of importing Megascan textures into Unreal and create a material that's almost identical to this one. Tip number two, use a macro variation texture. Essentially what this is, is one texture being tiled three times at different scales. So you have your small detail, medium detail, large detail, and you overlay this onto your landscape. And what this does is that it just breaks up the texture and adds random black splotches everywhere, which is great for adding color variation. So first things first, you wanna find the gold material located within your starter content. You wanna open up the gold in the starter content. And let's steal these nodes right here. Control C and Control V. So immediately we'll notice that there's three textures tiled at different sizes. This is for small detail, medium detail, and large detail. And then we have multiply to add all these details together and a reduce node because by default, this is way too dark. And then I'm gonna go add it at this location because I want this affecting my entire material, not just one portion. So hold M, connect those nodes up. And here is before macro variation. And now here is after macro variation and immediately that is such an improvement the landscape is already looking a lot more realistic just by adding random black splotches everywhere tip number three use a distance blend to control the sizes of your texture so if you're far away the texture will be larger and if you're up close the texture will be smaller okay so we will use the distance blend node so right click distance blend 
And I'm going to promote both of these to a variable. So right click, promote to variable. And to actually see what this is doing, I'm going to plug the result of this into base color. So I'm back in my world and I have my material instance opened up. That's how I can see what the parameters are doing. So the start offset will control where this blend starts. So how far until it starts blending between the textures. So right now it's at negative 1000. I could change this to negative 5000 to make the blend really far. I think I'll split the difference and make this negative 2000 for now. Blend range is really cool because this controls the fall off or how blurry or sharp this edge is. So if I just increase it, you can see slowly we're getting more of a nice fall off. So I think I'll leave this around 10,000. Yeah, right there. So let's set up our distance blend to be used with our grass material. I'm going to come over here and bring this over to my grass and connect this back up. Come back here and I'm actually going to duplicate these UV landscape cords, plug them up and name the new one, uh, let's do grass far. And I found a setting of 0 0.05 to be good. And grass size, we're gonna leave that 0 0.25 and call this near. So now I'm gonna plug this into my textures and if you notice, it would just override where this is. So we have to duplicate each of these textures, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. Now, once you have it duplicated, we're going to plug in this UV landscape cord into our new textures. And finally, use a lerp that's connected to this distance blend that will actually drive which texture is being used. And we can already see within the little texture previews that the grass size far is already larger than the smaller one. So this is great. This is what's going to be blended between the two. And finally, connect them back up into their respective slots. So now if we're really close to our landscape, we get the small texture. And if we go far away or look into the distance, we can see that we're getting the larger texture. Right now, this is set up as a very subtle effect. If we go into our material instance, I could change this to make it a lot of like a lot more obvious. So if we go grass far size, make this to 0 0.001. Then, then you're seeing the difference, but now this looks bad. So I'll just bring it back to where it was. Tip number four, vary your landscape with multiple materials. So if you've ever been outside, it's been a while, but if you do go outside, you'll see that the ground is not just made up of grass. It has other textures, other materials on it, like dirt, piles of leaves, sand. So you want to mimic that in Unreal. To do so, I can use my paintbrush and a dirt layer selected and just manually go through this entire landscape and paint in variation spots. But that would take way too long. So instead what I would do is use this Perlin noise texture in my starter content. Drag that in my landscape set up the landscape chords. I'm going to rename this to dirt blend size. And I found a value of 0 0.01 to be good. Then I'm going to plug this into a blend material attributes node with a being grass and B being dirt. and plug this into the grass layer. And we can see we're getting some nice splotches of dirt everywhere. Now, I actually think these splotches are too small right now, so I'm gonna go bring this up to 0 0.001. Okay, this is much better. So now we get some nice material variation, as well as adding a nice layer of color variation to this landscape. So I could fine tune this blend even more by adding a little bit more nodes. So something I like to do for pretty much all my black and white max is let's get out of there, go back in landscape, use a multiply node to control the amount of variation, and then use a power node to control the contrast.
Okay, so I set both the amount and the power to one. That's how by default, it's not making any changes to this blend. And now if I go to mount, I can control how much dirt is being brought in. And I can also control the contrast of that dirt with the power. And now we can see it's turning purple right now. And that's because the dirt layer is being layered on top of itself over and over again. And that's what's giving it this weird purple effect. I can fix that by going into landscapes, right click, bringing in a clamp node and just hooking it up like this. Now I can see that my power amount is adding in contrast and my blend amount can add even more dirt or take away dirt. So now I have a lot of control over that blend. Okay, so right now I think this is way too sharp. It's kind of like a more like a planet texture than actual landscape texture. So I'm going to bring this back to where it was and decrease the amount to one. So just the defaults. And I highly encourage you not to just use a simple dead grass texture, but actually go in and layer even more different types of grasses, different types of dirt to really get a realistic result. Okay, so we are done. So don't forget to check out part two in this series where we are going to make an auto landscape. So it will automatically materialize your landscape. Also check out my other videos and don't forget to like, check out the channel and subscribe. Goodbye.